so let's get right to it then. How to read a Pathwork lecture using a rhetorical approach. I think it's important to understand, first of all, that rhetoric not only means the art of persuasion, it's also the art and science of truth-seeking. And in rhetoric, every text or performance is seen as an argument, not in a conflict way that we tend to think about the word argument, but really as a dialogue or a dialectic looking for truth. So when we apply the principles and methods of a rhetorical approach, we can really facilitate our understanding and grasp things more quickly and also perhaps more deeply. So why then apply this to pathwork? Well, the first reason is that the pathwork lectures are all set up and constructed in an argument format. And that means that each lecture has a topic and a position, which is known as a claim together. Or in pathwork terms, it's often called the promise of the lecture. And this lecture material is, is very conceptual, and it's based on core principles and understandings that come in and out of all the lectures. And so this really makes the rhetorical approach a, a very wise choice to help us really get at the material. And it, it works. It does make the lecture material much more accessible. So what we will do here is we're going to use a foundational lecture to demonstrate, and for this I've chosen Pathwork Lecture 157, which is Infinite Possibilities of Experience Hindered by Emotional Dependency. And this is a lecture that's suitable to those new to Pathwork as well as experienced Pathworkers. And this approach is also suitable for those new to Pathwork as well as experienced Pathworkers. And also, I will offer support and follow-up if you have questions and need more explanation. The basics here are that argument theory or rhetoric has a lot of elements to it, right? Claim, supporting evidence, warrant, backing, logos, pathos, ethos, fact, definition, cause, value, policy. And the good news is you don't have to know <laughs> any of that to follow this approach. In fact, I've condensed a lot of the basics of rhetoric into five questions that we can use when approaching Pathwork lectures. And so these five questions are, what is the lecture's claim or promise? And why does this topic or this particular topic of the lecture really matter? And secondly, what concepts or truths form the foundation of this claim or promise and make it possible? So what's underlying? What are the, the, the assumptions and beliefs and truths that um, underlie the argument or the claim of this lecture? Also, in question three, we need to figure out, well, what are the key terms and concepts that are stated and or defined? Sometimes they're stated and not really defined, and other times they are stated and defined. And then we need to get more specific about what the lecture is saying about, this is question four, about how we are staying stuck or ignorant or limited, however we want to take, however we want to look at that. And another way to ask that is, well, why are we getting negative results? And of course, the follow-up to that is, how can we get unstuck, right? How can we be free? And another a pathwork way of, of asking that same question is, how do we replace vicious circles with benign circles? Well, for this particular lecture, um, we're going to go through this process. And this process can be used for any lecture. And it basically goes like this, that you print or write out the five questions, these five questions here, and then, you know, have them next to you. 
And you want to answer these questions in order by going through the lecture. And it's completely fine to skip through a lecture and find things. Uh, it's, this is a, a fundamental understanding about the rhetorical approach, is that we are not reading for the story, right? This is an active form of reading. So we're mostly kind of conditioned to read things as a story. We start at the beginning and we go all the way to the end. But that's not the way to read when you're looking for truth and when you're taking a rhetorical approach. You want to skip around in the beginning, right? So you want to answer the questions in order, skip through the lecture as much as you need to, and overall, and most importantly, be active in your reading. It's so easy to, follow, to fall into that conditioned pattern that we have when we read. We read somewhat passively because we are we're reading as if it's a story, but this is, is, is a very different way of reading. So the next thing in this process is to, first of all, meditate, contemplate on the answers to the first two questions. Right, which would be what's the lecture's claim and what are the truths or, or concepts that form the foundation. And for question two, those in argument theory are called warrants, if anybody's familiar with that. So contemplate and meditate on your answers to the first two questions. And then next, you want to study your answers to question three, which is you know, what are the key terms and concepts. And you really, at this point, need to make sure that you get what's being presented here. You understand these concepts. And if you don't, well, then you can look them up and, or review to make sure that you, you are on top of that. And next, you want to review your answers to questions four or five, which are how are we staying stuck and how do we get unstuck. And once you've done all of this in this process, now you're going to go and read the lecture from start to finish and you know taking notes as you go along because it'll be a very very different experience for you now that you have framed out the lectures argument you understand all the terms you know what it's about generally and so now when you read it you will deeply absorb it and that's the whole point of, of this process is to get to that point where you can read it and really, really take it in and then be able to apply it, which is the seventh step of this process, which now that you've read the lecture well and on this level, understand it, what kind of intention or intentions can you set for yourself around the material? Okay, so before we go now and answer those five questions, let me just show you here this lecture. And I'm using the unedited version of the lecture. I always use the unedited version. And that's a personal preference. I, I find that sometimes the edited version leaves some things out. And so I go with the unedited. Um, so this, you'll see that this copy of the lecture, I've gone through and made all kinds of, of commentary. In fact, it says I've made 50 comments. It's probably fewer than that because I think they include page changes as comments in this program. Uh, in any case, I've made a lot of, of commentary here. Some of the commentary relates directly to the material and in other points the commentary points to other lectures or the commentary is also perhaps an explanation of a key pathwork concept. And if you would like a copy of this annotated lecture, I will make that available to you. So this is the way that, that, that I've done it here, right? I've got a number of things highlighted that answer these questions, that the five questions, and go into it even in a lot more detail than that. So I just wanted to show you that. And now let's go to the answering of the five questions for this particular lecture. Okay, so the first question, what is the claim or promise and why does this topic matter? So the 
place where you want to see if you can identify the claim, and the claim, again, is the topic plus the position, and you can also think of it as the promise of, of the lecture. And we want to use the title because usually the title contains both of those things, the topic and position, within it. So let me just demonstrate that. Here the title is called Infinite Possibilities Hindered by Emotional Dependency. Well, the claim, if we just kind of move the words around a little bit, we can state the claim, which is that our emotional dependency gets in the way of the infinite possibilities that exist. And if we want to frame that in promise terms, that's usually going to be an if-then kind of statement. If we can clear our emotional dependency, then we can manifest these infinite possibilities. So claim and promise. You can see that they're the saying the same thing. They're just stated in different forms. Now, if we look at the lecture, we'll find that the claim of the lecture is best stated right here in this, in this line. Only when you can lose on the ego level, where you exert force, can you gain or win on the level of creation and power to form a good life. So where did this claim come from? Well, it comes from the end. And that's generally where you want to go when you're trying to answer this first question, what is the claim or promise? You want to go to the to title, first of all, and see if you can sort it out from there. And then go directly to the last couple of paragraphs, not the Q&A, not the questions and answers, but the last couple of paragraphs of the lecture. 90% of the time, the claim is going to be stated very clearly in that last part of the lecture. And it's also stated in, in the promise format here, also at the very end of the lecture in those last two or three paragraphs. And the promise format here is whatever it is you find you need from others, verbalize it concisely to yourself. This will bring you nearer to letting go. You will become free as you let free. You can see how it's essentially saying the same thing. Once you understand all the concepts, you'll see that they, these are equivalent statements. They're just put in different forms. And now the, the other part of question one is extremely important. Why does this matter? Why does this topic matter? And the reason I chose this particular lecture to illustrate this process is that this is a foundational lecture and this material really matters. Uh, we are creating our own troubles and suffering and um, we need not do this, <laughs> essentially. So that's why this matters. We understand the claim and the promise. At this point, we now have the, the lecture somewhat framed in very broad terms in our minds. So we can go now to the next question, which is what concepts or truths, let me scroll up a little bit, what concepts or truths form the foundation of the claim or promise and make it possible? So these are what are called warrants in argument or rhetoric, and those are those general statements of, of belief or truth, sometimes they're assumptions that really are the bedrock of the argument as a whole. So in this particular case, we have a number, I've chosen five here, five essential concepts or truths that are stated in the lecture that the whole argument relies upon. So first of all, creation is infinite in its possibilities. Next, in the depths of our being, we have the potential to realize these possibilities. Nothing new ever comes into existence. So with these statements, you can see something already. They're very general statements of truth or principle. Some people would say that they're assumptions. So how is that different from the claim? Well, the claim or the promise is very specific. It's talking about how these infinite possibilities relate to our emotional dependency. 
And that's the difference between a claim or promise and the more broadly stated truths or warrants of the argument. But we need these, these, these truths to ground ourselves in these truths to really be able to grasp the more specific argument. Um, also, everything already exists as a potentiality that can be made manifest when specific obstructions are eliminated. That's also an essential concept or truth here for this argument. Also, whatever possibility you can conceive of, you can realize. And stated in another way, you cannot bring something to life if you cannot first conceive of it. So these five warrants or truths or concepts, general statements, they are the, the foundational conceptual material of the entire lecture. So we really kind of need to, to make sure that we have identified these and are able to, to grasp them and open to them in order to fully be able to receive the lecture in its entirety. I also make a note here, there's, there's a difference between core pathwork principles that show up in the lecture and the, these, these underlying truths or warrants for the argument. For example, in this lecture, it, it talks a lot about pleasure. Man cannot live without pleasure. Um, to deny pleasure is to deny life. Or another assumption here or principle that's stated is if energy is used in its natural, correct, meaningful way, it never exhausts itself. Now, these are core pathwork principles, but they are not core concepts or truths for this particular argument. So I just want to make that, that clear here, that there's, there's a difference between those. And they're, they're both important, but we're mostly wanting to focus at, in this process, in our seven-step process, we want to focus on these, these, these truths that are foundational to the argument or lecture being presented. So our next question is, what key terms and concepts are stated and or defined? Again, like as we said before, sometimes things are stated but they're not defined. And, and in this case, we want to make sure that, that we capture as many of these as possible. These key terms and concepts will sometimes be specific to a lecture and other times they will be concepts and terms that come about repeatedly through many lectures. And so let's go through these. Healthy unfoldment follows the creation of a healthy personality. That shows up in many lectures. Defending yourself against negative possibilities is negative motivation. This does not this does not necessarily mean destructive intent. So this is one of those, those definitions that show up in this lecture that we need to really make sure that we understand. Negative motivation is a lot different than, neg than destructive intent. So being able to discern those is essential for us to be able to, to, be able to grasp and apply the material of the lecture. Um, also, negative motivation applies to all levels of your personality, mental, emotional, physical. Fear of happiness is based on ignorance. That's a, a, a key term and concept, that, a key concept that's stated here in this lecture also. And that every human harbors an attitude of fear and weakness that induces strong shame. That's a very important concept for this lecture. And in this next one, sort of bridging into question four, but hiding this part of us, this 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 attitude of fear and weakness is what compels us to sell out, to betray ourselves, to avoid disapproval and rejection. And as we go into the next question, we'll, we'll, we'll get more deeply into that. Also, in this lecture, the, the concept of force and current is mentioned. It's not defined here, and it is in a lot of other lectures, but in this case, it's just basically forcing self-will. That's, that's what force and current is. And particular to this lecture, it talks about how we use force and current to make demands on others. 
and we can paraphrase that as you must. You must do this, you must do that. Um, and also, this is hugely important in this lecture and for path work as a whole, that self-responsibility here is defined, but it's defined in a very broad and balanced way in that self-responsibility includes being responsible for negative feelings, which we're very used to in the path work that, you know, we, we understand like, okay, I'm, I'm responsible for my negative feelings, finding them, feeling them, and so forth. However, this lecture also rightly points out, of course, that it's also our self-responsibility to, self-responsibility also includes our right and possibility to create happiness. So without that, without that balance, we will not really grasp the fullness of self-responsibility and will be somewhat obstructed in, in, our, in our work. Okay, so question number four, how are we staying stuck or ignorant or limited? And again, these are general questions that can be applied to every lecture, and that's why I'm using different words here because they might apply differently in different lectures. Another way to ask the same question is why are we getting negative results? And in this particular lecture, it states, well, we betray our real selves. Um, whenever, whenever we hide or, or attempt to hide or wish to hide, even from ourselves, that part of us that where we're afraid and feel weak, that's a betrayal. And so then we submit, placate, please, and in the process we lose self-respect because there's a, of course, we're, our real self is, is aware of this going on. And so there's a part of us that distrusts ourselves and we end up fearing ourselves. And a vicious circle gets created here. And so that's one of the ways that, that we stay stuck. Also, very specific to this lecture, um, we stay stuck because we do not know or do not want to know that we are no longer helpless and dependent on our parents. And furthermore, we deny the intense pleasure of being and we look for fulfillment outside of ourselves. So I'm hoping you can see the, the value in separating things out like this, right? When we really look at what the lecture is telling us about how we are staying stuck and we break it down in this way, it becomes much more connected to the overall point of, of the lecture. It really helps us understand how this works. So let's look at uh, the last question is, of course, obviously going to be the, the next one. Well, how do we get unstuck? And Again, separating these two things out, that's why there are two separate questions, is very important. We need to understand, first of all, yeah, well, how are we doing this? And secondly, we need to understand how do we not do this? How can we do something different? And the lecture makes it very clear that we first of all, first of all need to understand how this all works and how and why we create emotional dependence. And we also need to understand and accept that we're not dependent and helpless. And this is where we now come back to the promise. And the lectures work like this, right? They start off with the, the claim in the title, and then it develops that, and the promise, they're all there. And then it gets restated at the end as it comes full circle. So here at the end, the promise is telling us how to get unstuck, right? Uh, whatever it is you need from others, verbalize it concisely to yourself. Really verbalize it. Be clear on, on what it is. Be able to state it. And this will bring you nearer to letting go. You will become free as you let free. And also, really important in this lecture, we free ourselves, we get unstuck, get unstuck by giving ourselves permission to establish and utilize the source of all deep, of all pleasure deep within us. So those are the answers here, or my set of answers for these five questions for this lecture. Let's go back and, and, and look again at the process so we can see how this all fits together.
Okay, so we're, these are those five, the five questions again. Right? We've gone through them. And now the process is that we, you know, we've had these five questions next to us as we go through the lecture, and we then answer these questions in order. It's important to do them in order because of the way that the, the argument is constructed. And it's also important, though, that we skip through the lecture at times to find what we need. And then we're going to go through and, and really contemplate on those answers to the first two questions, the ones about the, the, the claim as well as the, the warrant, right? What's, what's the specific thing that the lecture is about? And secondly, what are the general things, general truths that the lecture is about? And then we want to look at our, our answers to question three, which is all about the concepts and principles that are presented and sometimes defined. We need to make sure that we really understand those. And we also want to take a look at these answers that we came up with for questions four and five, right? How are we staying stuck or, or limited and how do we become free? How do we, how do we replace vicious circles with benign circles? And now once we've finished that process, we can really read the lecture this time from start to finish and we're going to take notes because it's going to be different now because we have mapped out the lecture's full argument. And so now we're going to be able to receive it in a new way. And we'll get new and different and deeper insights when we're able to approach the lecture from a place of knowing instead of being somewhat perhaps confused or uncertain or, you know, may be resistant because it's so much material. Breaking things down in this way will lessen our resistance to going through the lecture and finding what we need to understand and what we need to do. So the end of this process is, of course, to now set an, intent, set an intention for ourselves around the material. How do, we, how do we activate this knowing? How do we activate the, the truth, how do we activate our connection to our real self around this material. So I truly do hope that this process will serve you. And like I said, I'm, I'm very open to any questions you might have. You can get in touch with me. I will also make the annotated version of Lecture 157 available to all those who want it. Well, my annotated version. Um, and so thank you for watching this video and I wish you all the best on your path. Please reach out if you have questions about this. Thank you so much.